Greetings, and welcome back to our Standing Watch program. Nicodemus, a Pharisee and a ruler of the Jews, came to Jesus Christ by night to talk to him about his message. He didn't want to see him during the day, it seems, because he was afraid of the other Jews. And so when he appeared, Jesus Christ cut the conversation short by telling him that unless somebody is born again, he could not enter or see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus answered and said, well, how can that be? Do I have to go back into my mother's womb to be born a second time? And then Christ continued to say that if you are not born of water and the spirits, you cannot see and enter the kingdom of God. And he also said that everybody who is born of the Spirit is to be compared with winds, which you cannot see, but which you can, of course, feel and experience. And then he said that whoever is born of flesh is flesh, and whoever is born of the Spirit is spirit. Now, Nicodemus went home pretty much confused, I would think, probably perhaps meditating about what Christ had told him, and that is the same with people today. When people hear us preach about the kingdom of God and the born-again concept, they are either confused or they reject it outright. Because millions of people, well-meaning Christians, believe that they are already born again now. But I'm telling you right now, my friends, in accordance with God's words, no one, being alive today, is born again. No one has been born again. There are no born again Christians today alive on this earth. Because as long as you are in this flesh, you are flesh. And Paul was later inspired by Jesus Christ to write that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And you have to be born again to enter and inherit the kingdom of God. And as I pointed out in previous programs, the kingdom of God is the family of God, consisting of God the Father and Jesus Christ, but with the potential of man to enter that very family, to become a born-again child of the family of God. Now why is it that so many are confused today about this concept? Why is it that so many believe that they are already born again, which they are not? Simply because they don't understand the concept. You see, in the Greek, the word which is used to be translated as born is genau, G-E-N-N-A-O. And the word genau in the Greek has a variety of meanings. And many commentators and Bible translations know this. My father, who recently died and who had studied Greek, confirmed it to me, that the word genau can refer to the time of conception or begettal, it can refer to the time of birth. It can refer even to the time of the process, the interval during begettal and birth. And all of this is described in the Greek by the word genau. And now the translators had to decide as to what word they used. And sometimes they translated it as, bo as born, and sometimes they translated it as begotten. But in many cases it was an arbitrary rendition. When you, my friends, are really converted, when you have received the gift of God's Holy Spirit, then you are a begotten child of God. God's Holy Spirit, a guarantee for eternal life, is in you, but you are begotten. You are not born yet because you are still flesh. And then you are living with God's Spirit within you, being led by God's Spirit for certain number of years, and then you may die. And if you die and God's Spirit is in you at the time of your death, you will be born again into the kingdom of God at the time of Christ's return, because you will be then resurrected to immortal life. Remember, Paul said in 1 Corinthians, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, but a change is necessary. You've got to be changed from mortal to immortal. And that will happen at the time of Christ's return at the last Trumpets. Again, there is so much confusion out there because people don't understand what Christ is saying. 
You have a physical parallel when it comes to the spiritual born-again process. And that is insofar as the offspring of a human child is concerned. When a human mother has conceived in her womb, then a human life has been begotten. That is, by the way, my friends, a reason why abortion is wrong. Human life begins with conception. And if a mother decides, or if a doctor decides to help the mother to abort the child, they are transgressing one of the Ten Commandments. And I will be talking about the concept of abortion pretty soon in one of the follow-up programs. But then the child who is begotten isn't born right away, even though he is already a child of the mother and the father, but the child is being nurtured in the mother's womb for, let's say, nine months or so. And then the child is born. And the same applies in spiritual terms. When you are a begotten child of God, because God's Holy Spirit has been given to you, you still have to live in this flesh for a while, being nurtured by your mother, the church of God, which is identified in Scripture as our spiritual mother. And those Christians who believe that they can work out their own salvation with fear and trembling apart from their spiritual mother, the church, are awfully wrong, are awfully mistaken. And in physical terms, they might end up as a stillborn child when the time of their potential transformation would have come. And then finally, the child is born, and we are going to be born, if God's Spirit dwells within us, at the time of Christ's return, into the kingdom of God, the family of God. And as I pointed out in previous programs, God is a family. God is the ruling kingdom of family, and it's going to be established here on this earth, and it is the potential of man to enter that very family. As long as you are not born from the spirits and water, you cannot enter or see the kingdom of God, Christ said. And so we read in the first book of John that once Christ appears, we will see him as he is because we will be like him, as I pointed out in a previous program. You see, you cannot see God right now in this flesh as perhaps only in a vision or if God manifests himself in certain ways, but not in his glorified form. But once you are entering the kingdom of God, once you are born again, you will see him, you will see Christ in his glorified state as he is. My friends, you have to understand that in order to be born again, you have to be begotten again first through the Holy Spirit. And you can only become a begotten child of God through certain conditions and procedures which have to be met. One of which is water baptism. Water baptism is signified and symbolized as a watery grave in which you bury completely your old self and from which you arise as a newly begotten child. And that is why you have to go through water baptism and you have to then receive the Holy Spirit and ultimately you will then be born again by entering the family or the kingdom of God. As I said, many translators have added to the confusion by translating the word genau as begotten when it should be born, or as born when it should be begotten. Now in John chapter 3, the word born is correct, but in other places, a wrong translation is being given. In order to help you, my friends, to fully understand the concept of born again, what it means, and what those scriptures tell you. We have prepared a free booklet. It's talking about born again. It's asking the question, are you already born again, as so many millions of people believe? And the answer is no, you are not. This booklet also explains to you very clearly all the scriptures, which are perhaps to be misunderstood by some due to wrong translations. So do yourself a favor, my friends, and ask for this free booklet. All you have to do is to write us and ask for the Born Again booklet, or go to our website and read it there. Thanks very much for watching. Until next time, this is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program.